Sutherland, that is a fabulous goal. Fight of it, and the world champions are the European champions. That is absolutely sensational. Inside the Box, presented by Booking.com. First of all, welcome to Inside the Box, guys. This, this is the show that I've been waiting to do for a while now. I'm Rio Ferdinand, and I'm with a very, very special guest today. One of my mates, actually, behind the scenes. Done a lot of things together, holidayed, families, etc. Um, but he's been on an incredible journey throughout his career. Also, the journey they went on in, in, the, in Euro 2016 to the semi-finals, by the way. Wow's in the semi-finals of the Euros was unreal. This is the captain of that world side that had Gareth Bow, Ramsey, all these guys in, in their first major tournament since 1958. And it's my pleasure, guys, to introduce to you the captain, the leader, Ashley Williams. Thanks for having me. You all right? Yeah. You like that intro? Man. Yeah, it was a wicked one. Nice, oh, yeah, yeah, I was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is crazy because I, I, obviously I spoke to you and knew you before you went into that tournament. Your, your journey, you come from lower leagues all the way through to captain the Premier League team, Swansea, then captaining your country. Could you have ever imagined that when you was playing lower leagues, captaining Wales in a tournament like this? No, never ever. I had them dreams like we all had, playing mm. on the park, saying that we, we, it was John Barnes, there's no, there's no uh, secret in that, I was John mm. Barnes at the time, playing at you know, Wembley doubles or whatever you played. But, <laughs> um, and then as my career got on, I obviously went through non-league, League Two, League One. At no point did I think that I would have ever been on that day in that semi-final. Like, coin toss as captain of Wales in a semi-final of yours, never. Yeah. Well, let's start, let's get into it, man. I mean, 2016 Euros, you got off to a great start against Slovakia. Where there would were, that rank in terms of nervousness for your career? The high, like high, but it, this, that, this Slovakia game, so the, the way it started was in the morning, I'm in bed, uh, I kid you not, loads of noise outside my hotel room, loads. So I was Woke up at eight o'clock, yeah. I pulled my curtains back and it was a sea of red, like as oh. far as you could see, loads of noise. So I was like, that was the time when we was like, okay, we've arrived now, we've arrived. Get to the stadium. This point was so special in my career. Mm. I'll never forget it because it felt like a home game for us. It felt like we was playing in Cardiff. Our fans were so loud. And because it was the first one, there's no expectation on us at all. You can, the, like the anthem, if anyone doesn't know, the Welsh national mm. anthem is so emotional mm. for everyone. And so many opposing players have said, come down the line and said, that's a wicked anthem, you lot have got an unbelievable anthem. It just sounds amazing. So at this point, we, we're not really sure what we're facing because it's our first tournament. But we did, we did have this man, yeah. which, which we knew. So all we had to do was stay in the game and something like this is going to happen. And this is something that we worked on. It's me and James Chester on the end of the wall. Pushing the wall. Create a little bit of space and he's going to hit that gap. So then you know what it's like in such a tight game. When you, when you get one, you get ahead. We all know how good he is, but what's he like around, it, around the, the camp? You'd never, at this, you got to think as well, put yourself back there. He was in the conversation of the best three players. Mm. Now we talk about the best two, but he'd edged in for a couple of years. He's saying he's bail as good as Messi and Ronaldo. And that was a, a valid conversation. He used to just be with us. He was, the, he was like a little boy around the place, just mm. little tricks. He was great for the squad. Like, you know, like buckets of water against the door for when you open it. Well, he not, he just didn't take it too seriously. Never, he, nothing like. serious about him. Nothing, he never took it like, he was the, one of the most chilled characters. And for young players coming in or new players getting their first cap, he was great for them because he'd welcome them in straight away and he's like a worldwide star. No, I loved it. And that, that, that team, this is what came out of this. Johnny Williams, I was like that. How, that so was you Ramsey, got, yeah, yeah, you got, you got Ramsey has a little bit of skill, Robson Canu, and then, if I'm not mistaken, it's, this is 2-1. But at this point, we, we kind of know we're probably going for a win. And, mm. and we had like little targets, so get to the tournament, that was enough. Now we're here, we, we kind of want to win a game. It mm. was like, let, um, with, with all due respect, it was like we wanted to score a goal. Mm. We wanna, we, then we want to win a game. Now we want to get out of the group stage. You know, like little ones. So once, mm. we, once this one had happened, we was in, we, now we're up and running. Two we got nine, points yeah. on the board. And no matter what, whatever happens from here on out, we've got a win in the Euros. And mm. that's not like a losing mentality. It's just, it was a realistic one. Yeah, yeah. But you can see the draw on everyone's face. It's like, we've got one. We've got a win. Because you know, it's been yeah, so yeah. long for them fans to turn up to a tournament. 
that just getting a win w w was enough. At 81 minutes we scored there. What, what, what was it like for you as an individual? Because obviously you've tested yourself at every level. There's question marks against you at every level. You've answered them and then you go here. Was, was that first game almost like for you? Look at you there in the middle, galvanising the team, doing the team talk. Is it like, right, I feel comfortable at this level now? Was there a moment that you had that? Feeling? Yeah. Yeah, because there was an element of, I play, I play in the Premier League every week, I know the top strikers, done a bit of Europa League, I know what it's all about, but now, I've done international for years, but w this is a major tournament, and you know what it's like when you get to a major tournament, everything's heightened, so mm -hmm. it's like more police on the arrival, more fans everywhere, more security everywhere, so it's like, oh, well, now you're actually on the big stage, so it's like, it, does it change, and then... There's a moment, I remember having a moment in that first game, probably between the anthem and the kickoff, where I said to myself, you know what, this is, this is what I've done all my life. This is mm -hmm. the 11 fellas against 11 of us. I'm just going to play my game. And then at the end of it, I, then it was like, oh, yeah, you can, and I can, you can influence it as well, Ash. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You can still do your thing on the biggest stage. Mm -hmm. So the next game is the big one, I, I take it from your side, it's England against Wales. Mm -hmm. Huge game. What, what's that like as a Welshman? I know what it's like as an Englishman, but as a yeah. Welshman, what's that like? I've, I've, I've been fortunate to play in this fixture, I think, four times, and I don't think we, I think we lost all four, maybe three or four, and we, we, we've always lost against them. But the game was so big that it was almost, you, you couldn't enjoy it. And mm. I know I'm re result out of the way, but it was just so big. And these are players that we know, that we play week in, week out. Some people are friends with some of their team. So the, the rivalry was massive, and we take the we take the lead. With we're still at unbelievable. But so you said that, sorry, but are you, are you thinking every time he goes up, is he that good that you're thinking this is yeah, so, it's like a penalty almost. But the, I, I don't know how far that is, but it's a long way out, and I'm I, I'm right behind it, right behind it, on, on the halfway line, and I'm I can see it, and I'm thinking, yeah, like he's, he's probably the chances are he's going to score this summer, yeah. and when it crept in, so you see the scenes, but we knew we knew in this game that's not job done because mm. they, were, they were a good team, do you know what I mean? And they had goals everywhere. So you think they had like Rooney playing centre mid or maybe in a the 10th, mm. they had Vardy, they had all storage and all sorts of people. So they had weapons everywhere. But you see how he's, he's hit the ball. And, and look, there's me behind, so he's got such a good angle of it. Mm. See, my arms go up, my yeah, arms see, go yeah. up early because like, you, know, you know that like he was just unstoppable and he'd do this every day after training. Every day the, the sports scientist would say to him, stop, please. And he'd be like, no, nah, it takes oh, his, his balls and he's just, he's just doing that. He's just wobbling them into the goal all the time. So it's not by fluke that he can do that. So looking at the England team there, like, who are the players that you guys are really concerned about? Like, obviously Rooney's one of them. What, what, as a defender, you've played against him a lot. What, what was he like? The problem for, for me in this game was Rooney was playing deep and you know how good his passing ability is. Mm. So they've got Harry Kane. I think, I think they had Kane and Vardy maybe, maybe Sterling's about as well. So. Each patrolled so deep that I knew that any time he got on the ball, he's gonna. If I'm not super tight on, on my man, he's, he's gonna. He, he could drop it mm. right where he needs it. So then I got to concentrate the whole time. That was a scruffy goal. That was disappointing that we conceded that goal. Uh, and this is like 90 plus eight or something. And that was before that was that was regular. Mm. So it was heartbreak. This wow. was this was heartbreak. Like real. We, we wanted to get the draw and then obviously they celebrated it and they enjoyed it but we was gutted I'll be honest the story behind this at the end of this game was we're completely gutted and then I'm the captain but this was one time when Gareth Bale stood up in our huddle I speak and then he speaks and he never speaks mm. and he just said listen we're two games in and we've got three points so would we have took this at the start and we all had to go yeah we would have definitely yeah so he went alright then well let's get a shower and then go home and that was Gareth Bale, and he he kind of gave me a lift that that time because it, it was such a late goal. We were so gutted, and then we went in, got a shower, and then got ourselves home and picked ourselves up. It's mad, isn't it? Because people think, oh, because that one person's got the armband, it's always them that does mm. the talking, always them that produces a moment off the pitch to galvanise the team. But you need other leaders if you're going yeah. to be a good team, or you're going to go f deep in a tournament. You need other leaders, don't you? Yeah, and I thought I think that the, all the times when I was captain, I've had times where I was captain. I felt like I was on my own, and the best teams I, I had three or four. Like in that team, we'd have Gareth Bale, Aaron Ramsey, Chris Gunter. We'd lean on each other. I would never make a decision without consult, consulting them three mm. straight away. So that that was just one example of where I probably needed a lift because I was so emotionally invested in the game, gutted mm. that he was the one that just put a little bit of reality on it and went, "We we're, we're not out of it. Yeah, we we still got we got another game against Russia, so we can still go through." 
So after that game, do you have do you have a little bit of a night out in the bar to, with each other to get yourself spirits back up? No, or is, is it no, not not one? after that after that game. We, we was pretty gutted, so we just kind of went went to sleep or whatever. But the next day, uh, Chris Coleman was like, right, uh, we got a mess like a text message come through on the group chat and said we not don't come down for uh, you know like when you get massaged and, and mm. cool down, but come down in whatever you want to wear. We're gonna go down the road. So we went down the road and then. We had these crepes, like, you know, we're in France, we had crepes, and uh, he goes, got two beers, like, everyone can have two beers like, for lunch. Wow. So we had two beers, we had Mid tournament? Yeah, yeah, after the game. And I tell you what, we went back to the hotel, and then he said to the boys, I don't mind you like, having a beer today, but obviously don't take the mic. So I think the boys probably ended up having four or five beers on the veranda, but like a little bit of card games or just chit chatting. But the, I remember by the end of the, the next day after that game, we'd already forgot about it. Mm. We forgot about the Indian game. That's the genius in Chris Coleman because most people will be saying, "We got one more game. We got a massage. We got to recover our body." Mm. He knew mentally we needed to recover a lot more than physically. And then by the end of the, the evening, everyone was. We kind of just we was looking. To, towards the next game straight away. Which was Russia. Oh, I think that game goes under the radar for, mm. for a while because this is probably the best we played maybe really, ever played, played ever, really ever, well. I think. We, we was in com complete control from, from the first minute. And I remember play, got, being out there at the back, watching those guys in front of me. Like he, Aaron Ramsey that day was unplayable. And I remember watching them thinking, this team is unbelievable that I'm in front of me. I didn't have that much to do at the back. How, how good was Aaron Ramsey? Because like, he, as he scored some goals, he was at one point, you know, people were saying, oh, he could be the next Frank Lampard in terms of the way he scores some deep runs and deep line midfielder. So, but I don't mean just to be dis disrespectful. Did he, did he fulfil the potential that he had? I'm not sure, because he, he was the type of player that, the bigger the game, the bigger he performed. Mm. Maybe in the, in the smaller games, he's kind of struggled to get up for the game maybe or something I don't because he didn't perform as big but like games like this where it's a must win one off against Russia who we thought are a bit decent of a powerhouse yeah, and a good team, team. he completely he, he played way he had more influence on this game than Gareth Bale did mm. and he ran the show so it was like the bigger the game and we've seen that even since I've retired in, 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 in qualifying games for Wales he steps up to the occasion but sometimes I think if the game doesn't require him to do that he might not be as influential as he is in the bigger game. Mm. But I see, see this goal in Neil Taylor, who's one of my best friends on and off the pitch. I remember he scored the goal right. I, I was so happy. Look, he didn't know what to do. I was gutted at the same time. I said, he's never scored a goal right. And he's got one in the Euros. And I was going, oh my God, I want one in the Euros, man. I, honestly, I was thinking, how's he got one in the Euros? And he's never that high up the pitch normally. You can see he don't know what, he don't know what to do here. I mean, Neil back Taylor, to him. he's another story though, of a kid that's come from lo like lower leagues. Yeah, Wrexham. Like Wrexham he come from and then worked his way through playing Premier League for Swansea and then obviously in the Euros like this, it's, it's phenomenal. It was, a, it, was a good, it was a good year for a, a bunch of real good lads. I can mm. honestly say like, there was no egos at all. We had a world-class player in Gareth Bale and uh, the rest of them were just, you knew, you knew them because you was around. Mm. I think you come out, did you? I don't know. Yeah, you I was out. Yeah, you, was out. you come out, yeah. I've seen you after one again. The lads are just the normal, normal lads that have mm. all had their own little journey. No one really was at the top apart from Ramsey and Bale. Um, and we just took, we, you know, we didn't take anything for granted. We just took each game as it comes and we enjoyed ourselves in the journey as well. Look at that. Yeah, we, that's when we knew we, we got through, we got through the group stage. So at this point, we, I don't think we knew who we had in the last 16, but to get there, you got to imagine like we, we never really thought we'd qualify. So to get out of the group stage was, was just mad. And there was, there was definitely beers in the, uh, was in there? the dressing room after. Yeah, Chris, I remember Chris Coleman just, you know, like the crates, he just slid one in, <laughs> he slid one in, the music was on. And we enjoyed that one because we didn't know if we, we always kept thinking we're not sure if we're going home, when we're going home. It was a joy to be around. It's the be best sum of our lives because it was like we was on a lad's holiday. If, if, <laughs> with, with, with all due respect, because every time we get on the bus, we, with the music's on, everyone's singing. Every time we, after the game, same thing. Every dinner time, you know dinner times, we, we've all had them where you, you have to go at 7.30 or 7, you eat your food, you go back up to your room. Mm. We'd stay for until 10.30, lads are just, darts, table tennis, just enjoying each other's company, mm. staff as well. So as a whole group, our whole, the plane that used to go, everybody on there, it was just a joy to be around. And we'd gone through, you got to remember that team, we'd been, we was ranked 100 and something. We used to lose all the time. 
we, we unfortunately lost our manager Gary Speed so we'd had to grow through that we was all a young squad and we'd all this was like the pinnacle mm. of where it all came together at the right time in, in, in 2016 mm. You go into this game against Ireland you're, you're, you're probably favourites here aren't you in this yeah. game it, 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 Is that a different pressure for you then? Yeah completely. this game was the, the, a different game to the other ones that we played all together it actually takes a moment of, of real good quality from Gazda and I think it's McCauley yeah, unfortunately is an own goal but in that position there's nothing really he can do because if he leaves it somebody goal. taps it in mm. but this was the first game where it was so tight because the, everything changed for us because mm. we felt like well, everybody put us as the favourites and normally we're used to absorbing all the pressure from teams that come out and try and beat us mm. then we're going to hit you on the counter attack uh, and this was a completely different situation Oh, well, we've got to oh, see that again. Smashed him. Wow. Is that <laughs> little Johnny Williams? The littlest man on the pitch as oh, well. Oh, you bully. You bullied him. The littlest guy. You just smashed him. But I come off much worse in this. I don't know how. Oh. I don't know how it happened, but in this collision, I actually break my clavicle bone and dislocate my left shoulder. What, in, in, the, uh, in the. Right there. Just there, like that. Right in, in, in the collision, yeah. So but the, you played on in the tournament? Yeah. So, yeah, so the, my clavicle breaks and then. The my, my shoulder dislocates, but it goes straight back in. Um, but we had about ten minutes left, and and you know it's like stubborn or stupid. But I didn't want. Mm. I just wanted to see the job out. Like the mm. pain, like defending that corner. Just I don't really remember the last ten minutes. I was in so much. Like, mm. It was bent like that. But you know when you just you started the game, you want to see the yeah, see the game it. out. We brought James Collins on at the end, but yeah. So that was that was so, painful. So after the game, you go to the hospital. Yeah, so straight after this game, get in the ambulance, go to the hospital, have one scan. Uh, I can't, I was out of it a little bit because they're giving me, uh, I don't know, painkillers. Pain killers. So I go to one hospital, come back uh, to the hotel, chill for a little bit, then I got another scan. I, had, I went to three hospitals and the last one, uh, we walked, I walked back in, I had like my flip flops on, dirt on my knees, kit, it's like 11 p.m. And Chris Coleman was just at the reception waiting for me. He just had a pint. Oh. He said, "Congratulations." Ooh. So it was just like, and then that we had a, we had a good night again because at this point, now, I, I think maybe we knew we had Belgium, or we know we've got a good team now anyway, mm. like a proper team, a proper top ranking team. So again, we're in the quarterfinals. Are you excited then about that playing a, one of the favourites, or are you like, oh, yeah, because no, we can't we lose that, that, that. This game was a bit of a no-win situation because we was expected to win. Mm. You must have seen it loads in your yeah, career. Yeah. We expected to win. You win and people go, well done. Yeah, yeah. But we, we, we expected that anyway. Now going into the Belgium game, I don't think anybody apart from us, like in, in our camp now, because we, we'd done Belgium a couple of times before mm. as well. So we knew like the psychologically, we, we kind of maybe we've got their number a little bit mm. because they had, and they had one of, I think they was ranked one in the world. Yeah, number one, yeah. Uh, they had, their squad was Hazard, unbelievable. Lukaku, De Bruyne, De Bruyne Fellaini, yeah. like, the, the Mertens, just yeah. Courtois and goal. Remember the back Company. line was Matonga, and just so many yeah. players, like, they had so many. But we, we, we was like, okay, if we got to play any of the top teams, and we know each other so well, we'll, we'll have a go at these. We're like, we, we didn't mind playing them at all. And I remember mm. being in the dressing room before, even lining up here, we just thought, well, I think I think we can do I think we can do this, and then this is an unbelievable start from Mangaland. Oh no! But you know what happened at oh. this point? That's the best thing that could have happened to us. Relax, yeah. Yeah, we was tight before that. We weren't playing well. He scored, and it was like, without me or anyone saying anything else, it was word spread across the team to say, you know what, we're going up. We're going home in like. 70 minutes so we might as well enjoy the last 70 minutes mm. and it was one of the best games the boys are playing with freedom you got that goal you're talking about you got it look, look how happy your face so happy is. man <laughs> honestly you could uh, like the relief and just and but you know what it was a, it was like a double factor situation so the selfish part or the personal side was like you've just scored in a quarter final mm. coming from where i come from never would have imagined that mm. and secondly we need. We was on top, so we needed a goal before half time. So, so it was like a double thing, and we needed to go in at one one. Yeah, yeah. Because we we, we was on top at that point. It? Yeah, we didn't want to go in one nil and give them a bit of a breather because we was working them. The the way the corner was set up was it was a corner that we we did we worked on, and so we get in. We called it the bus stop. I think a lot of teams call it. So you know you can't get marked. Mm. So you go tight together. They fan out, and then the ref had stopped it before for the for like. 
the Argy Bargy. And I had Mark and me was Romelu's brother Jordan Lukaku. Mm. And he'd give me he'd give me too much space or a new like he'd three or four yards and I thought if, if Rambo puts this ball in there, I've got some separation. Mm. And it was like it was like slow motion. It's one of the, you know people talk about it in like NFL and different. Yeah, yeah. It was slow ball come slow motion, and then I just knew everything that was going to happen after that. But I could watch it all day, not for me, but when you see everyone else's faces yeah, yeah, and the, yeah. like that. That's what I'm talking about. At the start was like. I don't know what's going, what I'm thinking there, probably nothing. But when now I look back, I'm like, look at everyone else enjoying it as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, that's that's how the enjoyment comes, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Post. Who do you think is going to be the wows of this tournament? Like, there's always one. I don't, yeah, I, every single year, I think, I, I don't know, there's some t- interesting teams like... Albania. You, you don't even know, Albania, Georgia, I don't, it, it could be any of them. But mm. like, I, I agree, there'll definitely be a team that no one had down that makes a semi or a quarter mm. or something. Because you had Iceland this year as well yeah, that exactly. went pretty far. Crazy. Yeah, your fans and Iceland's fans were the two best fans I thought this tournament. This was this is a wild goal. This, oh. is, a, this is kind of it's turned into a, an iconic Euros goal. Really, I was screaming it? when that went in. I couldn't like just to turn. It, you know, from from my angle as well, it's so weird because it's like at this point the turn and they all go, oh, and I'm like, are you gonna slot it? Oh. How? And he puts it away, and it was like one well, out. We're oh. up two one, and this and this was the game where we felt like. And me, especially in the middle of a back three, we could play for four days here and you ain't going to score. Oh, yeah, Because yeah, we was too well drilled and they, they had a lot of possession. And I remember looking up at the clock and I think it was about, maybe I'm wrong, but about 54 minutes or something. But I, I didn't care. I was like, we, we can keep going all day with this <laughs> Belgium team. It's mad though as well. Like the two last goals, Robson, Camus and, and, and Vokes here. Great header, old school, get across the front post. But they're just not names that jump off the sheet and you go, oh, they're going to be the ones that are going to get us through. In the quarterfinal. But it's nice to share, share that around, isn't it? Yeah, mate, amaz- like, and they, Vokes and Robson Cannon did such an amazing job for us as well. I'm so glad they got their goals in, in the quarterfinals as well. I remember running up to there. That, I was actually a little bit emotional running up to there because I knew we'd done it. Mm. And I'm, I'm running up thinking, what? And the lads were going, what are we doing? We're in the semi. Like this is not us. Like, even I mean? like what in them moments there. When yeah, like the lads just can't believe it. See, I don't know. I'm a bit emotional there because I just never imagined in my life that I'd be. It's oh. like how, you know what I mean? From it weren't that long ago I was playing for Hensford Town. You start to think I'm not far away from this trophy. You know, now it's getting a little bit, getting Real. a little bit realistic. Yeah, yeah. So then it was all of a sudden you're playing against Portugal with with arguably what the best player in the world, Cristiano Ronaldo. How are you approaching this game? Forget the team. How are you playing in position directly against one of, if not yeah. the best player in the world? How are you approaching this? Talk to I, me. I honestly feel like this game for me, but the way I pitched it up in my head was like the pinnacle. So it was like, okay, so you've done all this, you've done all this training, and you've come from wherever you've come from, and now you're playing against arguably the number one, maybe ever. The game itself completely threw us because. They, they didn't come out so, so the, the, why, what changed was they didn't try and attack at all um, they, you see them there they're, they're such a low block and we didn't really know what to do because mm-hmm. we were used to used to um, soaking up the pressure like I said before just but I showed one, my one kids one that earlier. clip so many times just put that on him early just okay. let him know. <laughs> I showed my kids that clip so many times and then you know in the, in the slow motion of that I can remember thinking it seems different but in my head I had it on uh, 1v1 oh, there yeah. might be a foul actually you done that. I think it was a foul. Are you pointing that there? You're saying that because it's your mate. It's your mate. <laughs> Why are you pointing that there? <laughs> but I remember it just, he picked the ball up because we, we misplaced the pass and it was like Ronaldo is running at you. Because mm. I didn't get to play against him in the Premier League. Oh, didn't you? No, we missed. So it's like Ronaldo is running at you. So, so how are you going to deal with it? And it was like all the training, do you know, like the training that you, whatever mm. it is like, then that it, it all come down to that moment personally. I actually agree with you as a foul, but <laughs> <laughs> at the time I felt like I took Yeah, but the sometimes ball. you got to do that, man. You can't let this guy run without like taking a bit of, bit of physicality. Yeah, here because there. imagine now we're going through this, this this many years later, and he just took it past me and put it in top you corner. I, I didn't want that. I didn't want that. I wouldn't. I didn't want it. He gets up so high. Do you know what what knocks me about that? And this is nothing against. Uh, I think it was James Chester that was marking him, but I was always number one marker. Mm. Even though I'm not as tall as, as others, but because of my shoulder injury from before, oh. I got bumped down to like two, and I, I just always had this. I wouldn't have jumped as high as he jumped, but but my thing was I used to just wrap them, them up. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. 
I always just think maybe if I'd have wrapped him up, that wouldn't have happened. And then we started to chase the game. Now your other mate pops up. Yeah, the money. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a... Did he get a touch on it? Yeah, it's a shot. <coughs> he reads it actually yeah. quite well and gets a touch on it. And we knew it was over at this point. We, 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 we were, we're looking for Gareth to do a miracle, really. And he did try his best, but... They were good defensively as well, weren't they? That's really the good. They were a solid team, weren't they? We, we couldn't break them down. Yeah. And we weren't used to breaking down teams, to be honest. Teams used to come out and try and beat us. Mm. And we'd soak it all up and then we'd hit you. And they, good, fair play to them. They had a plan where they... They must have thought, well, we'll see how they like that. They got mm. to come out and try and play against us, and it was a stalemate. It was a bit of a, a, a dead game in terms of like nothing really happened. But and then at this point now we're talking about a little bit weird because like you were so close to some, the final, but at the same time everybody's reminded everyone that's a win for us, mm. for for Wales as a country and as a fan base. That's what I'm saying. Are you are you, are you really down there? Like oh my god, that's what you're saying there. I think I'm just telling, I'm reminding everybody to be pr proud of what we achieved, uh, even though we just lost the semi-final, but taking them back to the start of the qualifying campaign, mm -hmm. where we we had, we just failed in the last, when I've been there, last four or five, and then however many before that, them good teams with Giggs, Hearts and, you know, Ian Rush, mm -hmm. then none of them made it. We made it this, and we made it this far. And it, yeah, it's over, we're going home, but the semi-final is something to be to be proud of and, mm. and we knew at that point we'd done something a little bit special which is what probably why you got me sitting in the chair today because we it was we didn't know one ever thought Wales was going to get there. Yeah and I think it's important that, that as I said people you, you, like you just said someone might say well, why is Ashley there he didn't win it but there's different levels of, su of success for every country mm. and for some countries without winning the trophy nothing success. For other countries no disrespect like Wales getting to a semi-final is just like a huge achievement. It's mm. almost like winning it for most other countries. And so, and the way you've done it with the fans, it was a, a camaraderie there that we, you don't normally see. It was unique. Yeah. And so, yeah, I wanted to just kind of give you your flowers for that. I mean, leading that team as well, the dressing room, the players you had in there, the staff, and that group bringing it together, I think is something to be marveled at. So listen, I want to say congratulations, well done, and thank, thank you, you again for coming, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Appreciate it. Always. Good to see you.